Well, now let's add some vessels to our picture and let's scroll down again between our two halves of the brain in the frontal region you're gonna see some whitish dots right here do you see them these dots they show us the distribution of the anterior cerebral artery so this is the area where the anterior cerebral artery supplies the brain and as i scroll further down in the area of the lateral sulcus here we have another vessels they are the branches of the middle cerebral artery and further down there we have these big vessels which run all the way around our Mickey Mouse sign, all the way around the midbrain. These vessels, they show us the location of the posterior cerebral artery. I um, do not expect from you to know all the branches and all the features of the distribution of these vessels, but I would like you to be able to associate the hemorrhages and strokes in one or another area with their respective main vessel which supplies it. And where all these vessels come from? We have three main arteries which supply the brain. They are two internal carotid arteries, which are these two twisty trunks on both sides, on the right and on the left. And one more vessel in the middle, unpaired one, is the basilar artery. The basilar artery is made by two vertebral arteries which ascend up through the cervical vertebra, passing through the foramina transverse area, as you remember. And they fuse together, making the basilar artery, which runs just on the lower surface of the brainstem. It gives tiny branches here to supply the brainstem and all our nuclei of the cranial nerves. And the largest branches which it gives are right here. They are the posterior cerebral arteries, which supply the occipital lobes of the brain and some deep structures of the brain too. The uh, internal carotid artery, it also gives some important branches and you can see these branches right here. This is the middle cerebral artery, which is right here, and the anterior cerebral artery, which runs anteriorly here. If we rotate our image a little bit, you clearly can see the areas of distribution of these vessels, the anterior cerebral arteries, the posterior cerebral arteries, and the middle cerebral arteries here. They are on this picture. Now let's look at them. Let's look at them from above. Like this. And again, you can see the basilar artery and internal carotid arteries on both sides, right? and two posterior cerebral arteries behind, two anterior cerebral arteries in front, and two middle cerebral arteries on both sides. And we have some uh, system of anastomosis here. The posterior communicative arteries, they connect the posterior cerebral artery with the internal carotid artery. And two anterior uh, cerebral arteries, they are connected via the anterior communicative artery. So they make like a circle here. And this circle is an um, important compensatory mechanism for our brain. If one or another branch is uh, occluded by something, like a thrombus or atherosclerotic plug, in that case all the other vessels will help and deliver the oxygen and blood to the suffering part of the brain. Unfortunately, this circle, which is called the circle of Willis, according to the first author who described it, it, it is not always well developed. And the communicative arteries were not always clearly visible on the MRAs, just because they are tiny.